Welcome back to my bed, my mattress, my unfurnished home. I decided to film a second round of reviewing my subscribers' homes because I got so many great submissions and I love this series. And I'm currently working from my bed, so what better way to enjoy this time than to review people's homes and be judgy. I'm not being judgy. I'm really just giving my own personal feedback on how I would decorate the space. I did just put a new one up on Wednesday and this is like the part two, even though it's, it's not even a part two. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, let's review some more homes, shall we? Sarah from Canada, hello. I'm reviewing your home, thank you for your submission. I think Sarah's home is very lovely. I think there's definitely some touches she could make to just kind of make the space feel a little bit more personal, but let's take a look at Sarah's Canada home. Right when you walk in, there's not a lot of warmth. It's very white and there's not really anything with wood touches. So I would suggest, I would, I would, would suggest, I would suggest adding wood, a little, vintage table to the left of that door, something slim for your keys or whatever, and then add an oil painting or a mirror or a piece of art above it. I think that could really tie in the space without adding in a ton of stuff. Just a little, just a little, a little table, you know, just a little table. I actually really love the gray in her bathroom, which is shocking because I normally don't love gray, but I think that gray weirdly works. It doesn't feel too blue and I think that's where people struggle the most with picking out gray colors is going in like this weird like cool blue tone and this one just feels right and I like how she painted the trim and the ceiling and the ceiling trim all the same color I think with a small bathroom just ball out and do it all moody even her art is dark which I think is really nice I think she did a great job with this bathroom it feels upgraded and like clean and I feel like I just want my bathroom to feel clean. I think my only suggestion would be to add in a Roman shade. That could be a really nice way to incorporate some fabric and warmth in there and you can add a fun color. If you're scared of pattern, I feel like Roman shades are the perfect area to do it because it's just kind of like a fun little, little touch, you know? As for the entry locker area, I think those are always just smart to have in a mudroom because what else? What did what did people do before those? I guess just a wall. In my childhood home, we also had these lockers that my mom painted really dark and I really liked it. So this looks nice. The blue is very farmhouse feeling and was trendy, I'm sure, when this house was built, but I do like it. I don't I don't hate it. And it's well done. I also really love the baskets she added in there and that's exactly what I'm talking about with adding in warmth to her home. That's the tone that kind of needs to come into play. Imagine if those weren't there. It wouldn't it wouldn't look as warm, I guess. So, love it. The rug on the ground is really the only thing I think you should replace. I just don't think it's the right shape. I don't think you want a runner rug in this area. You actually want something a little bit more rectangular that kind of ties in the door, the bathroom door, and the cubby system. Something more this size, I would suggest. Also, if you watch my channel, you know I don't love a fake vintage rug. If you're going to get a vintage pattern on your rug, just get a real vintage rug, is my suggestion. Now, as we enter into the family room, that is quite a large couch, but it is a big room and when I first looked at the family room I was like huh I wonder why the couch is facing that way and not towards the fireplace but then I realized that's where they wanted to put their TV so then the couch does cut off the fireplace a little bit strangely honestly this room is quite a strange layout because even if you moved the couch over to the TV wall you couldn't even put the TV on the opposite wall because there's a window right in the middle so I do think this might be their only way to arrange this room. I was going to suggest pushing the couch back so it's not blocking off the fireplace so much, but then you're so far away from the TV that it's just a little odd. Yeah, this is, I'm in, it's interesting that the, the builders made, this room is just an odd configuration. And I think my main suggestion in this room would be 1A to add in a large tree in the back corner 
behind the couch. I think greenery back there could really fill up that space of the wall. I also would suggest taking your curtains and you have them at the right height, but take the pole and expand it a little bit and widen out the curtains themselves. It will make the window feel even bigger. Otherwise, I think she has a very minimal style. I like the little ledge under the TV and I think just adding in some neutral pillows. I would suggest actually getting new covers for the pillows that came with the couch. I'm not a huge fan of keeping the pillows that come with the couch, the ones that are made from the same fabric. So just take those inserts and find new covers for them and it will really help the couch feel a little bit more upgraded. Oh, I just spilled. Oops. We're skipping over the kitchen because it looks pretty done up and good to go and moving right into this dining area. I like the direction that you are going. I think adding in a really cool pendant light, moving that table out from the wall a little bit and adding in more chairs. Obviously, I feel like she wants to add in more chairs. There's only two right now. And then what I think could be fun against that back wall is if you actually got a second one of those bookcases. So then it doesn't look so like little bookcase in the middle of the wall and have two of them. And that will kind of build out that space to look a little bit more put together. But otherwise, I think this looks nice. Add in a nice pendant light, get some chairs, good to go. If I were her, I would actually remove that door. It feels super unnecessary to have a door that you can close off from the dining room to the kitchen. If anything, I actually would even like, again, if you have the money and want to make some renovations, you could open that door up a little and make it more like an archway instead of a doorway. I think the dining room entering into the kitchen, a little bit more open concept. I do love small rooms, but this does feel like a little area, especially with this style of house, it doesn't feel as small room feel. It feels a little bit more open concept. So maybe, you know, open that door up a little or remove the door. Um, I don't know, why is there a door? Hmm. And here's where my main suggestion is going to come in. Life gets so busy sometimes. So it's nice to skip the grocery store, save a little time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your door from HelloFresh. And let me tell you, when I'm busy, I do result to takeout, and that's not always the healthiest option. So HelloFresh is really nice to have on hand. It's fast, it's easy, it's affordable. It's a restaurant quality meal right in your own kitchen. HelloFresh offers 35 weekly recipes, and you can customize your meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins, or adding protein to a veggie dish, which is really nice. It's also really comforting to know that you will always get top quality ingredients that travel from the farm to you in less than seven days. If you don't feel like schlepping around the grocery store and stocking up on snacks, sides, desserts, and more, I'm currently making a quesadilla. I love quesadillas, and let me tell you, this one turned out so good. Head to HelloFresh.com and use code PAGEWASSEL21 for 21 free meals plus shipping. Thank you again, HelloFresh, for sponsoring this video. When people get a home, they immediately think that the TV room needs to be like the big family room that exists maybe right off the kitchen. And I'm completely opposite. I like when the fireplace room or the big room that's kind of off of the kitchen and whatnot, I like when that's not the TV room. I actually like when the smaller room is the TV room then it's not, you know, the main center of everything. So, I mean, if she's up for the project, I would actually switch this room with the TV room. Then you have more opportunity to play around in that space with the fireplace because it's kind of oddly configured. And then you have more space to kind of throw in a sofa and chairs and make it a fun area to just hang out without having the TV. Whereas this room, I would make the TV room. This feels more compatible for it anyways. This does get a little confusing because it's off the dining room. So I would suggest switching the rooms if it makes sense with their layout. But this is like the perfect size for a TV room. Even though this room does look really nice how it is. And now that I'm looking at it at a different angle, there are double doors that go into this dining space. So maybe not. I don't know. That fireplace room just makes it feel like there shouldn't be a TV in there. So I'm desperate to move it. I really like this back office. Again, the color looks nice. It almost looks like a green gray, or maybe that's just how I'm reading it. And I always suggest if you have an office, if you, there is any way to put the desk in the middle of the room so you're not looking up 
against a wall. I always think that's nicer. This does look good. I almost would move the desk against that back wall, switch that in the console. It looks like there's a little bit more space. Right now the desk is kind of overlapping onto the window. So I would just swap those tables. And even, you could even pull the desk out and put the chair behind it. But that all depends on like your cords and monitors and stuff. But yeah, I would just switch them. Otherwise I, I really like this room. And I think the wall color with the rug is nice and a little pop of orange in the back. Good work. This next space is very spatially interesting. It's very small and has a very strange layout. So I thought it would be fun to kind of go through this one. This is Sue's, hi Sue's, from Brooklyn. And the place is really unique. I'm not sure if she rents or owns it. So I'm going to give some suggestions for both kind of, but I think it's the layout that's going to be her biggest challenge. So um, yeah. Hi, Suze. I first have to say that this place has such good character and that's what's so fun about living in Brooklyn. If you're going to live in a small space and pay probably a stupid amount of money to live in Brooklyn, the place might as well have some character. My God. First off, that cabinet above the fridge is so funny. Like who, why did they put such a thin cabinet there? If you can, if you own this place or if you could just ask your landlord for approval, Sometimes landlords will let you do things if it's if you present them a really good design decision. And I would be like, yo, can I um, knock down <laughs> this weird thin cabinet, like a spice cabinet basically, and add some open shelving or add in a cabinet that's like actually the width of that that space because that just is unnecessary. So ask your landlord or just do it if you own it. If you rent this space, I would highly suggest getting the peel and stick tile. I normally don't think it's always necessary to cover up the tile, but in this case, I 100% think you should. Even just plain subway tile will really upgrade it. If you own the place, obviously you can just scrape that tile off, but you could easily, easily cover that tile. Otherwise the kitchen is fine and looks good. It's really just that horrendous tile. <laughs> backsplash, you know. With the living room, immediately I have some suggestions. Oh, I really, you can tell that this wall over here was added or something because the, the fireplace is off center again. An off center fireplace really is truly annoying. My first suggestion for this family room would be to literally just rotate the sofa so that it's facing the fireplace. You know, it does separate the rooms a little and I think that's nice. It's not a terrible separation, but if you turn it, you could still have it against the wall if there's, you know, if it's tight, have it against the wall, but just turn it so it's looking at the fireplace. And then you could put a little bench behind the sofa, you know, for your bags and shoes or whatever. You can make that really cute. And then you could add in a nice floor lamp in the corner that maybe comes over the sofa. So that way the sofa's looking at the fireplace. I think it's kind of in a weird spot right now. Um, so just rotate it. Send me a photo of that if you do that. And then if there is space, I would try and move the desk in between the windows. If the couch and the desk end up like it's like too cramped, then you could put it back. But if you could get the desk in between the windows, I think that would be amazing because then, because then that does open up the left corner next to the fireplace for a nice big armchair with an ottoman or something to kind of bring in this conversation area. It's always nice to have one extra piece of furniture besides the sofa if you can make it happen. It's actually a really nice size bedroom. I feel like usually when places are this small, you go into the bedroom and it's like the size of the bed basically. So this is great. You could do so much in this space. I mean, I would suggest really doing up this view. When you look into the bedroom, you want it to feel like grand and really welcoming. Get two side tables with some nice, cool, like vintage lamps. Get a nice rug. And her bedroom swings back over to the entry, which is like, okay, this is a pretty sweet apartment. Nice flow, good size. I do wish the fireplace was not off center, but we can make it work. Thank you, Suze from Brooklyn. Send me photos, even if you just switch the couch. I just want that, that little interior design high. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about. Now we are heading to New Mexico. I really want to go to New Mexico. It's definitely on my travel list. I also don't want to travel this year at all. 
because I just traveled all year. I literally did not have a home for an entire year. So all I want to do is stay in Los Angeles and furnish my place and sit in my bed and sleep with my sheets and have my own dishes. So I do want to go to New Mexico eventually. I've been to Puerto Escondido, Puerto Escondido and Oaxaca, but I heard New Mexico is pretty sweet and the food is supposed to be incredible. Anyways, we're going to Mariana's house and I'm excited to show you all because it's different than my style, but I see a lot of pieces I love and I just appreciate her design approach because it's cool. So yeah. Right when you walk in, this is an incredible hallway. I actually love the colors she chose. The floors are such a cool tile with like a terracotta, like a deep red terracotta feel. And while I'm not a huge blue person, I think the blue walls with the dark blue trim and like some of the furniture pieces being dark blue is so cool. If anything, I would upgrade the curtains. I actually don't think curtains are always necessary, especially in small spaces or in kitchens. I would suggest doing blinds or Roman shades over curtains. So I would replace those and maybe bring in some of the floor color into a Roman shade that goes over this window. But otherwise, such a fun like entryway. Like even, I really even love that chandelier. It looks original. You can tell she really loves color and I really love her approach with even painting the floors this blue tone. And other than that, I feel like we just have completely opposite styles, but for what this style is, which is colorful and boho feeling and eclectic, I think she has done it well. And I really love a room that has a, multiple chairs and all these just, you know, I'm just all about that conversation. I guess I just design my home based off of not only comfortability for myself, but also it, when people come over because I love to host. So I feel like, I feel like you like to host Mariana. Do you like to host? <laughs> Let me know. This back room is fun. I do feel like there are one too many tables. Like I like the main back console cabinet thing. And then there's one to the right and one to the left. I almost would take the one from the left and put it over in the family room. Maybe replace it with where your standing plant is. I think this room just has too many pieces of furniture on each wall. And I think you could just kind of move them around the space so it doesn't look as like there's so there's just so many tables. But otherwise, this is such a fun room. This whole house is just has such good bones. Also, I can't really see the light fixture, but you totally could get a really big cool light fixture to come down over that table. Lighting is the easiest thing to replace. People are always scared of lighting, and I think especially if you own your house. I tell all my friends this. I'm like, if you want to do anything to upgrade it, let's say they buy this old house and there's a lot of stuff that needs to get done. I always suggest replacing the lighting first. It just completely changes the space and makes you less eager to have to make other renovations. I think the bedroom is so cool. That giant wood closet is so amazing. People nowadays would paint that white, but we are not painting that white. And I'm glad Mariana did not paint that white. And then check out her headboard. That's kind of like the headboard I actually wanted in my Chicago place. It's kind of similar, but hers is better. The green chartreuse dresser. And I like how she put the mirror to the right of it. I don't know if she could center that dresser because there is the closets. So I think she did a nice job at making that work. And again, the colors are just fun. The sconces are fun. I think this is a room that I really like her play on colors. It's more my palette, whereas the other room had some more pinks and I just don't really like pinks, but um, yeah, I think the headboard and the closet, the floors, the dresser, so good. And then she has a matching dresser over on this side. These two little red paintings are really cool. You know, she's definitely a maximalist. So if I had to say anything, you know, you could pare down on some items. For example, your little side tables are really cute, but then you have this extra little side table. It just feels a little unnecessary. She loves a table or like a console or a, a little cabinet. And I think that's really the only area that could really pare down if you're trying to declutter a little. Um, but otherwise, this color palette is just so fun, the oranges and blues and greens. This place is just so unique. It's such a fun layout. It's huge. The kitchen, I love a small kitchen, and that little like round window is so unique and great. There's not really much you have to do 
to upgrade this kitchen. I like how the ceiling is yellow in the kitchen as well. It adds some brightness. The hallways are a little dark, so you either go with that dark mood or you don't, and she went with the dark mood, and I think it looks good. I also think if you have kitchen appliances, always get stainless steel. A stainless steel fridge, a microwave, a coffee maker, whatever, always just looks better than like a plastic one. And I like how she put in this stainless steel countertop next to it just for a more cooking space. I think other people might get like an Ikea white one and I love that she did stainless because it just looks more put together with the fridge. I'm really into stainless steel right now. I love the look of like a chef's kitchen. I love the look of a stainless steel island. I just think it makes your kitchen look, I don't know, like you know how to cook, which I don't. That is it for today. You know, that's all I got. We've done so many reviews. I, I really do love this series. So let me know if we should keep making more. Should I keep, you know, taking submissions? You can send a submission whenever you want to. Highpagewassel at gmail.com. Just make sure it's horizontal. I don't know when I'm going to do these types of videos. So send away because I'm always going to be reviewing if you are going to be watching. But um, yeah, upcoming content includes more house updates and we've got quite a bit. Uh, I mean me, I've got quite a bit. We, I'm sorry, we, we've got quite a bit to do and I'm ready to get going. I have to travel to Rhode Island tomorrow and then I'm finally back and then I'm not traveling anymore. I don't want to travel anymore. I'm going to Providence. So if you live in Providence, comment down below. Because I want to know if I have any fans in Providence or watchers. That's where a lot of my family is from. Providence, Rhode Island. So shout out. All right. <laughs> See you soon. Goodbye.